Okay, this is another project um, that uh, was done. Uh, this is a, a powering an entire village with $25,000 from uh, Ingenieros Sin Fronteros, the Spanish chapter of Engineers Without Borders. And uh, that's too little money to do 45 homes. So what they have is every home gets a battery, and uh, here's a picture, gets a battery, a charge controller, and a couple of lights and wiring, but no solar panel. When the battery gets low, uh, the charge controller beeps to warn you and go beep. And then if they don't stop, there's also a plug, you can plug in a, a, a radio or a television. If you don't stop using electricity, it starts beep, 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 and then shuts you off. By the way, uh, you know what telenovela means. Anybody else here know what that means? It's Spanish for soap opera. The Phoenix engineers measure battery capacity in novella orders. <laughs> How many hours of soap operas per night your system will support? And uh, so anyway, it, it shut, shuts you off. I mean, just as she's telling them she's pregnant, you know. But they can bring the batteries, they put it on the system, and in one day, by the evening, they can take it back completely charged. And they also charge the people uh, 10 Cordobas per t battery, um, which is uh, about 50 cents. A Cordoba is worth a nickel right at the moment. So uh, this is a design that, um, and by the way, the group of Phoenix built everything, the structure and everything. That is uh, one of our engineers, a uh, beautiful job he did there. Um, that's the biggest photovoltaic system in the country. Those panels are not built by the group of Phoenix. Those are um, sharp panels made in Memphis, Tennessee. Uh, the Sharp is a Japanese company, largest manufacturer of photovoltaic panels in the world. And um, that's a 10 kilowatt system. And Mulukuku is in the jungle, which we now call rainforest, on the way to the Mosquito Coast. And um, that's um, uh, Rodolfo and I helped design that system. <clears throat> there is SUNY Solar. This is another part of the Group of Phoenix. Rodolfo and I designed that building, and I bought a house and lot in the barrio, paid $12,000 for it. Actually got a deed, even though it was squatters originally. And we built that whole structure, and it is the headquarters. This is the group that um, got the contract to do the um, 924 schools. They did it two and a half months. They had eight teams all together. They have six of them were doing the school project while two others were doing other projects at the same time. Some of the teams were installing uh, three systems a day. And now, uh, then towards the end, they got to the harder to do systems like uh, that's uh, a real SUV. The diesel engine, manual transmission, manual window cranks and everything, because um, I have pictures of that and another one of them driving through the Rio Coco with the water right up to the hood. Remember, diesel engines are run underwater because they have no electric parts. However, it's real hard on the starter. That's why you have to have manual transmission. So when you get to where you're going, you can push start it to get home. And um, also, that's why you have ma uh, manual door locks and window cranks, because the toys I see here, uh, one trip like that, and if you have your uh, windows rolled up and your doors locked, you'll never get out because nothing works. You know, your windows will never work again. So anyway, uh, that's part of the work. Water pumping. This is a big water pump system. This is a 280 volt system, and it's a three horsepower submerged uh, uh, well pump, and it pumps uh, hundreds of gallons of water per uh, minute. You know, uh, you know, maybe a thousand liters per minute, and it fills two great big reservoirs. And when they're full, the switches turn off the pump, 
and all the electricity is used to charge batteries in the village, so you get du dual use out of the system. Again, this was done by the group of Phoenix with money from a group called Green Empowerment out of Seattle. Uh, I went with, uh, we do work in other countries. By the way, micro drip irrigation is where you have little tiny tubes in the ground and um, you feed the water right to the roots of the plants. Uh, instead of spraying it in the, in the air where half of it evaporates before it hits the ground, they have these big rotary things here. They use five times as much water as this does to do the same job. But, uh, oh, water is absolutely cheap and it's going to last forever in Nebraska, right? I mean, the, the, uh, the wells are already dropping here. Uh, here is, uh, we're giving a workshop where um, this is for Care International. We're teaching other people how to do this. And um, that's Carolina Barreto. She was a Nicaraguan campesina who uh, was uh, my student at the university. And um, she's now um, at the uh, UMass, UMass Lowell, the University of Massachusetts at Lowell, getting her PhD on a complete Fulbright scholarship. Yes? Oh, she's the one with the hat. The other one's my sister, Kat, who is an environmental scientist who came down for this workshop. So we're teaching all these people from CARE, the heads of CARE. In fact, the, the head of CARE Peru was there learning how to do this, as well as Argentina, Brazil, Chile, um, I think Ecuador, um, uh, Costa Rica, Honduras, and Belize. We had a whole large group of the people uh, taking the workshop. And, uh, and by the way, we run the photovoltaic pan on the pumps directly from the PV modules with no batteries and no controls. We have an on-off switch, that's the only control. And, and see, we can make our own modules so we can tune the module to the pump motor and the well depth so that we can deliver just the right amount of electricity. Uh, this is a um, solar box cooker. Now this is the tropical one. The sun is almost directly overhead where you are and most of the time, so you have the glazing facing straight up so that uh, this is the most efficient for that area. Uh, by the way, if you want, I have in my laptop, or actually I think I have in the memory stick already, a book. Uh, in Spanish and English, complete details of how to build these. I can give it to you if you have a laptop. Okay. Uh, this is the second women's group. Actually, this, uh, in order of history, this is the first women's group that uh, teaches women how to do this. And um, in one of the cookers that they build, here is Ziomara teaching uh, women how to build them. You see one's partially built back there. Um, we, um, they cost about $68 worth of parts for this big family unit. And those things will get hot enough to bake bread. They go up to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. And, um, and cookies and things you can bake in them. Now you have to learn how to cook with them. So we offer cooking classes. There's Susan Kinney. She's the woman who invited me to Nicaragua that started this whole new profession. I, um, was a, I am a scientist, yeah. I still uh, give scientific papers and I study things. But in 1959, I started this whole new profession. I had to learn Spanish. I didn't know any Spanish or anything. And so I'm now 70 and I am the busiest I've ever been in my life. So I'm, theoretically, I'm getting Social Security, but I don't know what the word retired means. And actually, I'm working very hard to make myself completely dispensable, but it's not working very well, I'm afraid.